Hi, I'm Urvashi Bitre and my blog is twosleevers.com and I am actually also the author of this best-selling Instant Pot cookbook that you might be familiar with, which is the Indian Instant Pot. Um, but what I have to share with you today, in addition to how to make rice cauliflower and how to make a delicious um, cauliflower and cheese, is the fact that I also have another book out. And this book is available for pre-orders. Um, it's called the Keto, the Keto Instant Pot. So if you're trying to eat lower carb or ketogenic, this would be a really good book for you. I'll talk about it in a little bit. Now, for those of you who are not eating keto, I want you to know there's stuff in here uh, for you also. And um, I'm going to walk through the uh, cauliflower stuff first, and then I'm going to tell you how it is that you can uh, adapt some of the recipes that are in this keto book for a non-keto diet. Basically, it's really simple. You basically add potatoes, um, rice, bread, pasta. You add some kind of a side that has carbs in it. You combine it with the deliciousness in this, that's in this book, and you're ready to go. So today what I'm going to do, however, is I'm going to start you off showing you how to make your own riced cauliflower. Um, so if you start a low carb diet, that's something you become awfully familiar with this cauliflower and all of its various permutations and combinations. And, you know, you can go buy it, of course, and many of us do, uh, but it's actually not that difficult to make it at home. And so I wanted to show you how you do it. Now, I've seen recipes where people do it in a food processor, and that's certainly an option. Uh, the Vita Mix works a little bit better for me with a liquid. So basically what I do is I fill the Vita Mix uh, about, oh, I don't know, halfway ish through. And then what I'm going to do at this point is that I'm going to take little bits of cauliflower um, that are hopefully evenly cut. Uh oh, made a mess. And I'm going to put the florets in here. Let's just dump in a few. You've got to be careful not to overload it, uh, but you have the liquid in there to keep everything moving around pretty quick. Um, the only thing to be aware of is two things, actually. One, don't overload uh, in here. Uh, and then the other one is try to put in florets that are about the same size. Um, if you're trying to uh, also rice the stalks, you may have to do that separately. So that's about how much I want to do. You may have to do this in phases, but I think it's worth it. So now, you know how Vita mixes are really powerful. This could go off. Mine is on low and on medium speed. So let's zap it. Okay, you really want to be careful not to make soup. We're not trying to make soup here. Um, and at this point, let me open this and let you have a look. Um, I'm just going to pour this out into my little colander. And that is how long it took for me to make riced cauliflower. So you see here now it's going to drain, um, but that's essentially riced. Okay, and it's fairly even um, and it's quite beautiful. So I am going to uh, move this aside so that it can drain. That's exactly how long it takes to rice your own cauliflower. So we're going to move our Vitamix out of the way and I'm going to switch in for the cooking. Okay, so what I'm showing you today is how to make um, a cauliflower cheese dish. Let me just move this and I'll talk to you about it. Okay, so we finished rice, ricing our cauliflower. Uh, it didn't take us very much time at all, and I had um, uh, drained this earlier for you, so I'm going to show you. So this is about two cups worth. Look on the blog uh, and in the cookbook, the keto cookbook, there's um, actually a proper recipe in there. Um, but one thing I will tell you is don't do this too much in advance. Cauliflower really can smell up your entire kitchen. Um, so do this right as you're about to use it, and we will dump that in here. So we're going to dump about two cups worth. Oops, there's a little piece that I left whole, which I should not have done. That looks like about two cups to me. But what am I gonna do with the leftover? So I'm dumping that. I may end up having to add a little cream or something like that, but there's my rice cauliflower. I am now going to add in um, half and half or whipped cream, depending on what you want. And we're gonna mix all this in. The most important thing here is to let your uh, cream cheese sit out for a while so that it's kind of softened because you're gonna have to blend this guy in. And this is the part that really takes me the longest time to do. Um, but, you know, it's not that complicated. And then, so basically we've put in cauliflower. We've put in half and half. We're putting in cream cheese. And we're going to dump in a little bit of shredded cheddar or whatever kind of cheese you want. Something sharp um, is usually my preference. I'm going to put in a little bit of salt and pepper. And... Actually, I like lots of pepper, but we're just going to put a little bit in today. Um, I don't. I need to be careful with the salt just because the cream cheese and um, the cheddar cheese are both going to have salt. So I'm going to mix this in here. And like I said, the key here is to make sure that the cream cheese is well smooshed in. 
So now let's talk about this while I'm mixing it. Let me explain what this is going to taste like. So if you're doing this, expecting something to taste like mac and cheese, it's not going to taste like mac and cheese. It's going to taste cheesy. It's going to taste delicious. It's not going to be mac and cheese. And you should not go into it with that expectation. I've seen, by the way, the same recipe posted as being like mac and cheese. And uh, honestly, I, it doesn't work for me because then I, my mouth is set for something and I'm expecting something and it doesn't turn out that way. So let's just be honest about what it is. It's a gooey cauliflower cheese. So now this is it. This is literally it. If you look down here, you'll see that I have um, the cream cheese quite well blended in. And now essentially it was how many ingredients cauliflower half and half um, cream cheese cheddar salt and pepper so you know if you count the salt and pepper is not really ingredients um, it's less than less than five ingredients and then we're going to put this into our instant pot but the way we're going to do this is let me get the pot in here so this is um, an ultra that i'm using here and i'm going to put the ultra in here uh, we are going to do pot in pot cooking. So if you have never done pot in pot cooking, there are many, many reasons why you might want to do this. I have a pretty um, handy little video that says, um, you know, why you, the five or four or five different reasons you would do pot in pot cooking. And that's on my YouTube channel and it's on my blog, twosleevers.com. So do check it out. Uh, but essentially what you're going to do is here's your outer liner. You're going to take a bit of water. So people say a cup, I put in a cup and a half just to be on the safe side. Then what you're going to do is you're going to put in a little steamer rack. This steamer rack is going to help elevate the pot from the bottom. Um, these come in different sizes. The one that came with the pot is a little bit lower. You can definitely use that. What I have here is a greased um, container. So I spammed, uh, pammed, not spammed, pammed the heck out of it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just dump this in here. Now, normally cauliflower wouldn't take very much at all, like rice cauliflower like this, it would almost be insane to um, pressure cook because it would just become complete mush. However, since we're doing it pot in pot, it's going to take a little bit longer. And actually, I experimented with this quite a bit. And what I discovered was that five minutes um, was the optimal time period. So I'm going to push this down in here just to give it an even cooking surface. And then, now understand how this is going to work. The pot at the bottom is going to generate steam. This is going to keep it off. This has enough liquid in it to cook the cauliflower, plus the steam from it is going to create, the steam in the pot is going to create heat that's going to cook the cauliflower. And then because I don't want any of that water getting in here, I am going to put in a little silicone cover. Now, the first question people ask me when they see this is, oh my God, this thing is so high. You're already at over uh, the two thirds mark. What you don't want is you don't want food to come in over the two thirds mark, okay? There's a difference between food coming in over that mark and your pot coming in over that mark. If your food was up to this point, by the time it boiled and vapor built and it bubbled, it would be coming out of here. In this, that is not likely to happen. So it's okay to have it large. We just need to make sure that the lid closes. And, but here's the lid and this is an ultra, so normally I would have to do ceiling venting. In this case, I don't have to. Um, it's just going to sort of set itself. Uh, you see how that popped up. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to go to pressure cook, and I am going to give it um, five minutes on pressure cook. So select pressure cook, go over here, go down. Let me just show you what this looks like. I'm going to have to do it backwards, which may be a little bit difficult. Okay, five, five minutes, and then I'm going to press start. And then I'm going to walk away, I'm going to let the pot do its thing, and I'm going to come back um, when it's done, uh, it's been cooking for five minutes, and then I'm going to give it 10 minutes of natural pressure release. I'm doing that because it's going to use a residual heat at that point to cook. So I just want to tell you while we do that, that in this keto cookbook are not weird recipes. I'll tell you some of the recipes that are in here, and you'll see how normal is regular everyday food, okay? Broccoli, ham, and pepper frittata. Anybody in your family would eat this. How to make an egg loaf so you can have egg salad. Baba ganoush, Mexican style zucchini and poblanos. Thai yellow curry soup. A poblano chicken soup. Uh, a Vietnamese stew. A spicy creamy chicken soup. Uh, chicken and kale. Uh, lobster bisque, which is totally yummy. Uh, shrimp and tomatoes, chicken and bratwurst. Uh, sesame ginger chicken. 
uh, braised beef brisket. These are regular recipes. The only strange, quote, strange ingredients that you might not have in your house are ones that I mainly use for dessert. So I have almond flour, I have swerve or truvia, um, which are sort of, you know, these um, uh, artificial sweeteners, if you will, or natural sweeteners, but not sugar. And then I think the only other unusual ingredient I have is xanthan gum because I use that to thicken things. Now you could use arrowroot powder, potato starch, corn flour, you could use whatever you want. So just because you're not doing keto uh, is not a reason for you to stay away from this. What I would do if I were you is look at this as 65, 75, whatever, really good recipes for the Instant Pot. It's been authorized by Instant Pot. Uh, it went through the same care that my other book did. Uh, and I would just get this and add whatever kind of carbs you want on the side. Okay, I'm done with that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a break and I'm going to come back when this is finished and I'll show you what it looks like when you open it up. Again, I'm Urvashi Pitre, blog is twosleevers.com and hang in there and I'll show you the finished dish. Okay, so we're back and um, it's cooked for five minutes on high pressure and then 10 minutes for uh, NPR. So it allowed it to cook in the residual heat. So let's have a look at what we've got in here. Um, there was no pressure left actually. All of the pressure had released in those 10 minutes. And I'm going to very carefully take this off. And there is my uh, little cauliflower cheese. And it's fairly well set. Um, it's not like a hard set thing, but let me just move this out of the way. And um, you see here, let me just poke in here for you. It's not like it's gonna be set like a souffle. It's a little bit soft, but you're using this as a creamy side dish. Now, one of the things that I do um, is that I do actually um, broil the top and I made a little hole here to see that the bottom was cooked, so forgive me for that. Um, but you broil the top and it, it sets up really, really nicely. And as it gets cooler, um, it sets up really well. So basically what you have is four or five ingredients. It took less than five minutes to mix up. And this is something that the whole family would enjoy. The fact that it's low carb is just details. Um, so essentially the whole book has recipes in it that are just supposed to be delicious. Um, if you didn't tell people they're low carb, people wouldn't know. And in fact, I have several people who are cooking it at home without telling their family members that it's low carb. Uh, people are losing weight. Everybody's happy. Dinner tastes good. So I do hope you try that. And uh, again, this is um, Keto Instant Pot. I'm Urvashi Pitre. My blog is twosleevers.com. And today I showed you how to rice cauliflower and to make a cauliflower and cheese casserole or a side dish that I hope you and your family will enjoy. Um, I hope you check out the blog and I hope you check out the books and I hope this was helpful. Thank you very much.